everyone, today I'm going to be reacting to Michael Jackson's history album. So basically the first half is the greatest hits. I've already heard all these songs. I'm just going to be mainly listening to the second half, the songs that I haven't heard on that. And the whole video will be timestamped, of course. And let's just get into it. First up, it's going to be Stranger and Moscow. enjoyed this song. I definitely think it's different than a lot of stuff that I hear him do. Usually I feel like a lot of it is like up tempo or mid tempo. And so I just really liked it like musically and all the chord progressions and stuff like that. I thought that the vocals on here were super interesting. I liked the lyric. Comment on the music video for this song says, Michael Jackson wrote that song in a hotel room in Moscow. He was inspired by a sense of loneliness he felt in his hotel room in spite of thousands of fans chanting his name outside. This song portrays the emotions of disillusionment, alienation, isolation, betrayal, anguish, and loneliness. It is a song of struggle and triumph. It's a theory lavishly melodic haunting ballad was produced out of chaos in Michael Jackson's life. And in response, at the time he was being accused of child sex abuse. The song is about a man who is trying to have his voice heard while he's being crucified by the media. So I'm really happy to have that comment because it gives me more context into the song and you know what he was going through at that time and like their interpretation of it. And so yeah, what a great way for me to kind of like start off this video. I really, really enjoyed it. It might be one of my favorites all the way throughout it. I just felt like there was something so profound and meaningful about the song and the comment kind of just reinforces that. Part. Next up is this time time around. I really like this one, like the production and the vocal styling stuff remind me of something off of Dangerous and I really like that album. And then Biggie's rap on it was really good too, so I liked it a lot. Now on to Earth Song. What about sunrise? What about rain? What about killing fields? Is there a time it's dark to know this blood we shed before? Crying earth is weeping. I What about all the peace that you pledged? 
I've heard a small part of this like years ago, actually hearing like the full thing and the lyrics and everything. Definitely a very meaningful piece about just like the world at large, all the atrocities that we see going on, all the people who are struggling and just being sad that you see so many people are suffering, knowing that most of us, we can't really do anything sizable about it. And so I just thought it was like a beautiful piece and kind of just like representing that. Vocals in here are like bone chilling and so powerful as well. I really like the production and just the way that it went all the way throughout the song. But yeah, a great piece on this album. And that's one thing that I appreciate about Michael Jackson is like he knew how famous that he was. So he always had, you know, songs in his albums that were gonna talk about what was going on with the world and race and politics and all those things. And I applaud him for that because some people had, they had the power that he had, they wouldn't do that because, oh, I don't wanna lose fans and just cowardice and stuff like that. But you know, he was never one of those kinds of people. And that's something that I really encourage. I think, you know, what is your platform even if you're not doing anything with it? And so I just really enjoyed the song, like hearing it all the way in full, like the key change and all the little parts there. Next up is DS. I enjoyed this song, I just thought the chorus was really repetitive. I was curious who he kept referencing throughout the song, so I have looked it up on Genius It Says. The sixth track on the album, DS, is aimed at the man most responsible for Michael's ascent from the top of the Pop Mountain. Michael lays out his grievances, accusations, and assumptions against Tom Snedden, who at the time and later in the People vs. Jackson trial seemed to have a personal vendetta against him. During the 2005 trial, the fans outside the courthouse sang this song ad infinitum. Jay would later be acquitted of all charges. DS is also notable for being one of the few songs Michael would use a sample in, this one being, yes, owner of a lonely heart not only that but this is the soft soak and superstars only this song making it ripe for inclusion on rap genius but yeah i've noticed on this album he's talking about a lot about the trial and stuff like that because i think the allegations were first in what like 1993 so yeah he had a lot of grievances to kind of put on and just want to share his side of it which i can understand and later he was acquitted on all charges next up is money <laughs> this is a great piece for this album kind of just talking about money how a lot of people don't really have integrity you give them enough money they'll basically do whatever you want and it's not really about morality it's about money and how much can the money get me ahead and kind of just thinking about oneself and the greed that that can bring out all of us so that was just an interesting piece in terms of that i really like the vocals and like the production as well there and so i think this is kind of just in relation to the trial because i swear i heard somewhere that basically like people were told like oh just say like he did stuff to you so we can get money something like that i may be wrong if i am please correct me but you know if that is the case i think it's messed up to accuse somebody of something that horrible just so you can get a big payday that's my opinion next up is come together
Okay, so I know that this is a Beatles cover. I know that he was a fan of the Beatles. He has two collaborations with Paul McCartney, Say 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 and The Girl Is Mine, both of which I like a lot. And if you know one thing about me, I'm a huge Paul McCartney fan. He's one of my favorite artists of all time. I also love the Beatles. So I wonder why this is the song from them that he chose to cover because I would not have thought that this is the one that he would have went with. It's still really interesting. I liked his version of it and the flair that he adds on it. I never got to say this earlier for one of the rock songs, but I love whenever he gets into his rock bag. It's something that's super cool to listen to. And I love that he could do pop, rock, R&B, and just like all those different genres. So it was interesting to listen to. I wish they would have kept the drum parts from the original because I really like that. I think that would have made the song more dynamic. Besides that, I have no complaints. Vocally, he definitely ate this song. Next up is Childhood Theme from Free Willy 2. Have you seen my Oh, I liked his vocals on the song. I could appreciate the production. At a certain point though, I did start to get bored. I kind of just feel like it was really repetitive. I feel like if it would have been like half the length, I think I would like it a lot more. I don't think this is gonna have a whole lot of replay value for me being honest, but I can appreciate it for what it is. Next up is Tabloid Junkie. Singer Michael Jackson sleeps in an oxygen chamber. <laughs> I really enjoy this song. I think that it's super catchy, him even addressing some of the rumors about him at the beginning. And I mean, he's right because there's so much stuff that's said about celebrities that's not even true. And then a lot of times like we feed into it, especially if it's someone we're already not a fan of, we just want that kind of confirmation bias and stuff. And so, you know, there's artists that I'm a fan of like Mariah Carey is my favorite artist of all time. And there's a bunch of stuff that's been said about her that's not even true. And then I have to correct people and everything like that. And just saying like, look, like I've done a lot of research on her here and the things that she said that kind of negate exactly what you're saying. So just because you read something in like the national Inquirer or you see it on TV isn't true. People make up stuff all the time just because they want to have a hate campaign against the artist because they want to get money. There are hidden agendas there. So don't believe everything you read. Definitely fact check. So I could appreciate the sentiment of that. I thought it was super catchy to listen to. I liked the production on here a lot. Vocals were outstanding. So definitely got to be one of my favorites off of this album. Next up is Too Bad. <laughs> So the 
this song is all right. It's not horrible. It's not outstanding. I think there's just so many great tracks on this album. This one kind of falls towards the bottom for me, but it's not bad by any means. Next up is History. This is another one for me where it's like, it's cute for what it is and him just talking about history at large and you know, the hopeful nature for the future and all that stuff. But I think that this is gonna have a lot of replay value for me, probably not. I think this is something I might listen to occasionally and appreciate, but that's just my opinion. Next up is Little Susie slash Pai Joe. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Let's get into it. All right, this song is a snooze fest. I swear I've talked about this song with my friends several times and one of them always makes fun of another one because they like this song, something like that. Yeah, like the beginning of the song, I was very bored to be honest with you. And then once he came in, I feel like it got better. The whole song is just not good enough to warrant me to even just skip through the beginning and listen to the end of it. It's just kind of there to me on this album. I'm gonna be one of the worst songs on this album. I don't like it, I really don't, I don't go for it. Now to the last song, Smile. I like this song. The vocals in here are beautiful. I like the production. It just runs a tad bit slow for me. Like, I just wish that it was faster. I think it'd be more enjoyable, but that's just my opinion on it. I like it. Really quickly, I wanted to give my thoughts on the songs that I didn't react to because I've already heard them. So I just thought the second disc. So, Scream with Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson's one of my favorite artists of all time. I thought the music video was so cool. And yeah, just what a great song. So iconic. And then They Don't Care About Us. I love this song and just how political that he gets in it. And, you know, kind of just talking about black people. I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Which is so true when you see how we're treated in society. Like I said, I can appreciate him using his platform for that. And then uh, You Are Not Alone. And so this song actually is a chop, 
You wanna know why? Look at the songwriting credits because of who wrote it. Not gonna listen to the song, not gonna support this song. The song is not that good anyway, so yeah. We're just gonna pretend it don't exist. It's gonna be hidden on my Spotify, and that's that. Now on to my favorite songs on the sound based off of my first listen. So Stranger in Moscow was definitely top three material in my opinion. I really enjoyed Tabloid Junkie as well. I'm probably gonna say Earth Song, but my opinion can change as I listen to this album more. We will see, but that's just the ones that kind of stood out to me the most. My overall thoughts on this album, I enjoyed it. Him getting more political, him talking about his personal issues and how he felt about that and just using his music to do that. I thought it was really interesting to listen to. He's a great songwriter. And then I also really liked the production on this album, the soundscape and everything that was going on all the way throughout there for the most part. And I also really quite enjoyed his vocal performances and just how immersive that he made the song. I like most of the songs of this, the ones that I can really leave. Like I said, You Are Not Alone, I don't go for that song. It's a chop. And then I also kind of felt like childhood, it might be something I listen to occasionally, but it wasn't really a favorite for me. Little Susie is absolutely a chop. I don't really go for that song. History might be something I listen to occasionally. Too Bad might be something I listen to occasionally. And now that I'm really looking at it, after Tabloid Junkie, this album kind of go downhill. It kind of does now that I'm really looking at it. And yeah, I'm thinking the first half is better than the second half now that I'm looking at it again. But overall, I recommend listening to this if you haven't already. I really enjoyed it for the most part listening to it. And so excited to throw this in my rotation and to see how I'm going to rank it up amongst his albums and stuff like that. And then later this month, like I said, because this video was delayed, which I apologize for, I will be doing my album reaction to Blood on the Dance Floor, those tracks. And then next month, I'm going to be giving you guys my Invincible album reaction and wrapping it up. Not gonna listen to anything that was released posthumously. I don't really believe in music that was released after artists passed because they couldn't really prove it. And you know, there's controversies with those vocals not even being his and stuff released. So I'm not gonna do videos on that. Invincible will be my last one that I do in terms of the album reaction. And then eventually I'm going to review all of his albums and stuff. And then if you guys have additional videos you want me to do on it, then just let me know in the comments and I might do some of them. It just really depends if I feel like it's the right video for me to do. If you wanted to see more videos on Michael Jackson, I'll have a card on the screen right here. It'll take you to everything that I've done on him so far. I have album reactions starting with Off The Wall, really. And then for the rest of the albums after that, it's just the tracks that I haven't heard on those albums. I just prefer to do it that way. And then my playlist will also be at the end of this video. I'll link down below the description if you're interested. Also regarding this album, one of my friends told me to do a lot of research about it. So I think that there's a lot more to learn about this album. So please educate me down below on the facts behind this album, what he was going through, favorite songs, like all that stuff. Cause I'd really love to know more information and like be filled in. I'm gonna ask my friends about it and stuff like that after I post this video for sure. But that is going to be it for my thoughts on Michael Jackson's history album. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What are your favorite songs, favorite moments? Let's talk about the era, educate me, all those things because I would love to know. I like to ask fan bases this because they're always gonna give me the obscure stuff that's really hard to find. And that's going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you did enjoy it, give it a like down below. It helps me out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. I very much appreciate it. You can subscribe right down below if you would like to see more videos like this. I post, you know, song reactions, album reactions, just music related stuff every single week on this channel. And then the first link down below in the description will be my second channel. A lot of it is me repurposing content that I make for TikTok, but not all. So some stuff I like to keep just for TikTok. So in terms of the kind of videos that you can expect to see on there, I recently just made a video and I was kind of talking about do the Grammys and awards really matter to an artist's legacy or do they not? I made a video a while back talking about why I think that Ice Spice is not going to have longevity. That's the kind of conversations we have over there. So subscribe if you want to see that. I also do other stuff. I've reviewed every single season of Dance Moms and I've done a bunch of other videos related there. I talked about basketball. I talked about the NFL. I have a lot of interest. So if you want to see more of me, you can watch that channel. And there's a lot of obscure Mariah Carey interview clips that I post there that are really hard to find that I like. And I'm also going to have social media. So Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, my earbuds if you like to follow me. And links to educate you guys on important situations. Free Palestine. This is something we must educate ourselves on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.